wonderful up here. There are holes with it you could fall and welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic, the attic above Horror Hotel in Chatfield, Ohio, where you have a good chance of tripping and falling over something and falling down a flight of attic stairs and killing yourself. But at least the thing on which you trip will probably be something cool. And speaking of be something, tonight's mask has nothing to do with them. It comes from, hang on, I see it over there, I really do. It comes from Cinema Secrets, that's right. And I refer, of course, to Nosferatu. That's right, Nosferatu. You remember Nosferatu, right? It was the movie that came between Nosferatu and Nosferatu 3. See, that bit, never mind. This particular Nosferatu is the Klaus Kinski version. And, uh, well, uh, different uh, versions of this character have been done over the years. And sometimes uh, people do the Max Schreck version, as seen in the 1922 silent original. But this version, from Cinema Secrets in the year 2000, is the Klaus Kinski version. That's Klaus Kinski, not Klaus Nomi, if you're taking notes. The Klaus Kinski version, as seen in Werner Herzog's 1979 remake. Okay? And again, this came out of the year 2000. It was out for a couple of years. Uh, I think it's a great mask, especially when you consider the price, because this was one of those uh, CTD masks, you know, cheaper than dirt. This thing sold for around 35 to 40 bucks, which is not a lot of money considering how very nice it is, how nicely sculpted and painted, and just how, how good the overall quality is. Um, and we can look right on the back here and we can see Cinema Secrets 2000 right there and this particular one still has a tag uh, hanging on there which is unusual around here by the way but uh, this this version I think uh, compares with the uh, very expensive Don Post version that came out in 1979 that version may have had more Klaus Kinskiness in it because it had these big staring eyes and for some reason Cinema Secrets uh, chose to give him sort of almost squinty eyes. I've got a piece of black felt inside there uh, just show you where the eyes are cut out. But uh, this one on the other hand is really a lot more refined and a lot more finished and ergo uh, a little more realistic looking than the uh, high dollar Don Post one. So I don't know which one I like better in terms of sculpture. Uh, I like them both for different reasons, I guess. The, uh, the Post one looked a little more like Klaus. This one looks a little more realistic to me. And um, wow, again, you can't beat the price. Now, uh, you don't see these too often, but uh, it does come up on eBay and places like that, and there are still costume shops that have them. And by the way, for those folks who uh, don't know the difference between the Max Schreck Nosferatu and the Klaus Kinski Nosferatu, an easy way to tell is that uh, any version of the Klaus Kinski Nosferatu would have to have that vein shaped like a Y. See that letter Y right there? That would be an essential part of any well-balanced Klaus Kinski sculpture. And uh, this particular guy cast in regular latex, okay, regular latex and just painted up with sort of a pale pinkish flesh and some some pink and brown shading and uh, again for 40 bucks wow I thought it was a great mask I think you should probably go look for one and uh, remember uh, Nosferatu is basically just Dracula he's 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 a variation on a theme think of him as Dracula's cousin or uncle or brother who wasn't as likely to get a date for the prom and you'll have an idea of who Nosferatu basically was sometimes called Orlok Sometimes he's Count Orlok, sometimes his name is Dracula. Ah, you know, a vampire by any other name would smell just as much like a rose. Good night and thank you.